Mic check, mic check. is landscapes so send one landscape photo over to sdp.io slash submit if you submit during the live show your odds go up if you submit during the live show your odds of your photo being shown go up even more i like how you pause because you're used to being edited yeah exactly if frank if you could just edit that yeah. out we'll edit that in post we'll edit that in post but what yeah. do you want do you want to go right into viewing photos or Oh, yeah, I definitely do. Actually, no, we have to um, tell people that the show is sponsored by us, even though nobody listens. Okay. So this episode is sponsored by us. If you want to support the show, go to our website, Northrip.photo, where we have a bunch of presets. We have an entire book on learning photography, and we have a whole Flash series, if you just watched our latest Flash video. And then we also have a coupon code, LIVE15, if you want to save 5%. That lets me know that people from the show are doing stuff. Let's go, Tony. Let's review. Okay. Let's look at photos. I'm getting worse at being persuasive, aren't I? Yeah. You got to channel your QVC. I know. I do that for the holidays. Simon yeah. Barnaby. This is very cool because it is primarily a landscape photo, but Simon put something into the foreground to make it interesting. There's an interesting use of negative space. But you know, I got to start out by cropping this. They said. Wait, is that level? It didn't feel level to me, hmm. but I'm looking at the, okay, it's not, all right. Anytime you have a horizon there, you got a level. And that was actually closer than it seems. My head is tilted. This is taken with a, a Samsung Galaxy. I am all for this. I actually think smartphones do a really good job with landscape photography, especially if you're just going to be sharing it on it's social media, right? Yeah, and I also think that it's mostly about the composition, the weather, the time of day. Yeah. So... I mean, good gear helps, but you can do it with your phone sometimes. People want to convince themselves that we have control, more control than we do. We have some amount of control, but landscape photos, it's mostly up to Mother Nature. This is getting philosophical. Okay. okay. Here's well, a photo from Russell Richard, and this kind of illustrates it, right? Because this needs something more. It needs an interesting sky. It's not the worst sky. Like, blue sky is kind of the worst sky. He's got some cool clouds in there, but sunrise, sunset could be so much more powerful. Sometimes I like to put it in black and white if maybe it makes the composition a little more interesting, but I think the color was good here. I like the color in this photo, the blue skies and the warm light in the photo. Um, I think it's overall nice. I think it could just be punched up a little more with a stronger composition, which is something we will show you how to do as we go through more pictures. Yeah, finding a focal point can be really hard. Chris Green. This is... Uh, I'm okay with cityscapes okay, being well, included in landscapes. Right, I'm not strict about it. I think that if you had gone earlier in the day during yeah. the blue hour, right after sunset, you would have had more light in the photo, a really beautiful sky while still having the city lights on, and you would have gotten more definition of the buildings. But I do like how colorful it is. Oh, he had a watermark in there we couldn't really see. Oh, he's full of secrets. And this is mostly a still life. You're at 1 30th of a second with a stabilized lens. Like, I, I would definitely try to get that down, use a tripod if you can, and, and try to shoot at the base ISO. And I like to make the night shots a little blue, cool them off a little. Yeah, you're right. Auto white balance kind of fails. Okay, we have our first proper astro shot. And I think astrophotography techniques are so useful to supplement your landscape composition. Like, during the day, find cool compositions, and figure out where the Milky Way is going to be. And this, this is like, I think, a panorama um, showing the whole Milky Way, but kind of artificially curved. I think that's a little bit counterintuitive, but in a night photo, it's okay to brighten it up and still use the histogram to get some bright whites and some dark shadows. Mm -hmm. And so when you have things a little too dark, the details can get lost, so don't be afraid to go in and put up your exposure and put up the whites. You could drop the blacks a little bit. You can even go here and select a brush and select the sky. And then if you wanted, you could put up the texture, the clarity to make it a little more punchy. 
and you could even play with the color in there if you wanted to add a little bit more magenta. And then let's press Y before, for a before and after, and you can see, you know, it's tough for me to do the way exactly I want in just a few seconds, but you can see a little bit more of the composition now. Good points, Chelsea. I like editing photos. Sometimes in our photo group, in the SDP group, I just secretly edit people's photos for fun. <laughs> you don't um, even sh they'd probably want to see it. No, I'm such a weirdo. No, sometimes when people share photos of interior design, I'll go, I'll edit their whole room. That's, I'm kind of a creep in Photoshop. Okay, Kent Falls. Yeah, so this is a long exposure. Well, moderately long, at one eighth of a second and F8 ISO 100. I, this is the time to throw on an ND filter. I like waterfall pictures if you want them to be smooth and flowing to be two seconds, three seconds at least. Yeah, don't you also have a stacking technique where you just take a bunch of pictures and stack them? I do, um, and that's not perfect, but it can make it seem smoother for those times when you don't have a tripod or you don't have uh, an ND filter. I think that the colors in this weren't really what it was about. It's kind of about the line of this waterfall, so I put it in black and white. And um, I'm going to drop the shadows so you see a little more texture there. And I don't know. What do you think, Dave? I think they're yeah, both Yeah, I think nice. that helps. I think they're both nice, Dave. We haven't been really generous with the five stars in a pick today. Here's a shot by Zahid Jaffer. I, I just want to make sure that is level. You are good at seeing if things are level. I have no concept of level want in my to, brain. But yeah, my brain just immediately spots things are not quite level. And it's a big deal in landscapes because you so often have a horizon or something that is level like a bridge. Um, I think this is beautiful. Zahid is out there at the right time of day. See, this is key. It's all about timing. And he's got a beautiful sky. The clouds are great and they're reflecting in the water. I, I'm going to give this one a pick. I think, he got all the elements to it right. I think it's very cool that this side is built up and this side is nature. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. I might even go in and um, bring up the lights in the city. Like bring up the whites a little bit and brighten it up. But I think this is a really pretty shot. Thanks for sharing. Let's Alfred see. Alfred E. Newman may, might not be his real name. <laughs> um, I, I find it so difficult to get these pictures of wooded areas. Like if you're hikers like we are, you love to see nature, you love to experience like this, and I feel like it never, you can never capture it quite right. This is really pretty. It, uh, it makes me want to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's just very beautiful. I see a little bit of fog going on here. Yeah. And, and that adds a lot of depth. Timing is probably the most important thing with landscape photography, and that's why you always got to have a fog plan, right? You need to know a spot to go, and yeah. when the weather forecast says it's going to be a little bit foggy, you get a little bit get up early, you get up a little early, and you go out and you get your fog pictures. You execute your fog plan. For us, it was a bridge nearby us where the architecture of the bridge was very interesting, but the other side of the bridge underneath was very ugly, mm -hmm. and the fog blocked the ugly. Fog can be your friend, yeah, or your foe, really depending on how you use it. But um, Alfred E. Newman, I, I like this shot. Do you know who Alfred E. Newman yeah, is? Yeah, I do. Okay. thought that would be a generation gap problem. Okay. Here we have beautiful fall colors. So. But my eye doesn't fall anywhere. It needs a focal point to me. What it feels think? kind of impressionistic to me, like a painting or something. Mm -hmm. um, I'll agree that I don't think it has a focal point and that my eye's wandering, but I don't think it's unpleasant either. It's, yeah, it's definitely not It's unpleasant. nice. It's... It is very pretty. I think if you could get lower, find some rocks to put in the foreground, and maybe use a longer shutter speed to smooth out that water, it might capture a little more of the feel. But this is what I was talking about. Like, it's so hard to capture the feeling of being in the woods. I, I like to disagree with you, so I'm going to say this is unconventional, but I like it. Okay. I think that this breaks some rules, but I'm good with it, John. I, there's something very peaceful about it. This would be good in a photo set. Yeah. Okay, this is really beautiful. Kind of talking about why you need to go out during bad weather conditions. It can be tough to go out in the snow, especially in the woods, be tromping through the snow like this, but that's what's making this scene compelling. But especially the morning light that is yellow and kind of coming through the snow here. I think I'm going to give this one a pick. I just, I love it, but I want to crop it a little bit. Oh my goodness, it just wouldn't be the show if you didn't do that. The, it's the yellow, right? It's yeah. Look at the way the yellow is reflecting off of these trees here, and I just want that to be a little more prominent. 
So um, when we were talking about composition, what I want to point out about this photo, what's working. So if you're wondering why we're saying this, my eye's not going somewhere sometimes, that's usually because of composition. And I want to show you, Frank, if you can show them the pictures so they can see my pointer. Here are the things that are making this work as a composition. This element in the foreground is giving depth. And then this body of water and light is actually a leading line bringing you back here. And then the light is kind of the focal point. So you are getting the depth from the foreground element that he put here, and then a leading line back to the payoff, which is this golden light. So when you are taking a picture, try to lead people's eyes through the scene. You can use natural framing, like he used this in the foreground and these trees could be framing. And then leading lines, that's a line that makes the person viewing your photo look through the photo in the direction that you want. So you're trying to lead people through your picture. There's all different compositional elements that can do that. And we'll point them out in the show so that you can learn about composition in your landscapes. I also think you, the human eye, the brain, tunes out some distractions, like yeah. random sticks or power lines. And I think it's okay to replicate that in post-processing. If it's something your brain would have tuned out, when people look at a two-dimensional image, they will see it. So and this it's is kind of unfair. This is actually controversial. Some people think purists think you should not take anything out. So I'm curious to see what you all think. Do you think you should edit out things like power lines or a little branch like Tony did, or do you think you need to get that all in camera or it's cheating? Let's start a fight. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, Frank, do you have any questions or comments that you'd like to share with us? Uh, we don't have any questions yet. I've been watching pretty diligently here, but uh, we did have a couple or one comment that I saw. Chelsea, they love the edit that you did on the Astro photo right there. I really did too. You brought some beautiful color out of that. And Lee M, it's his first time in the live show here and really? he said they were loving it. Okay, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And yeah, one thing about night photos is that you kind of instinctively want them to be dark because it's night but you can brighten it right up it should just be exposed pretty normally yeah let's take a look at some pictures here's al koser christian um i'm a little bugged by the composition like i think you're trying to follow the rule of thirds here but it means the bottom two thirds doesn't have too much in it oops <laughs> gotta turn off my text messages Okay, so um, I'm leveling it a little bit, but also I just wish this were rebalanced a little bit. So you can do um, uncropping in Photoshop. I think Tony actually has a video of that, and you could just add more sky, and then the composition could be a little bit more balanced because you'd have more up top, more in the bottom. This could really be more towards the center of the frame, um, and that's really the the focal point. I will say I like that you set up the compositions so that you have these lines from the hills there's some depth because the hills are getting gradually farther away you put something in the foreground so that's really good it just needs to be balanced a little bit more jared clemens would you i guess this is kind of a cityscape yeah we'll allow it to pass i like that it has an old timey feel to it like you find you find this in a shoebox under your grandparents bed or something yeah um yeah that's that's interesting i think it does a good job of capturing the town i think yeah. the cloud is interesting it was good timing yeah, it's very like doc, just documented plainly. You yeah. Know? Ryan Zarki. Well, let's talk about the composition here. I'm going to put in crop just to show you the lines. In the lower third, you do have a foreground element that adds the depth that I've been talking about. Mm -hmm. In the top thirds, you have the sky that's pretty nicely balanced. And then you have these leading lines of the hills. That's pretty interesting. Um, I think that I would actually make this an eight by 10 and I'm gonna bring down this top third a little bit to bring your eye to the middle a little bit more because I think that's the most interesting part. The next part that I think is interesting is the colors. So I'm gonna warm it up and you can even do things with brushes to bring people's eyes around a little bit. So you could take a brush and you could just lighten up the grasses and then now there's even more separation because the colors were kind of blending. I want to fix the contrast because if you it. look at the histogram here, you can see the whole right third is completely unused. And that's just, just wasted contrast. You know, this is a bright and sunny day. We want the picture to be bright. And so we can just raise that white point until 
the histogram is used up on the right side and we can lower the blacks a little bit and just get more contrast to it. You know what else is really a cool trick? Going into the individual colors and there's like a lot of cool reds in there, you can, you can raise the color. What is this? Oh, that's hue, not luminance. If you raise the luminance, you could brighten up the reds a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you can play around. Same, I like to play with the individual colors. That was a fun one. I like when they're, I'm gonna give this a pick. I okay. like this one. Nice shot, Ryan. Is, this is the same place. Oh, but I like this one better than his other picture. You're right. The foreground here is more interesting. It's, it's closer. It's so, still a little off level. First of all, one photo per show, but we're still gonna look at it. <laughs> we're still gonna look at your second you picture because I think that this is like educational for everyone. The other one had a very plain composition. This one, you have the leading line of the water here. It leads you back and you have a better sky. And he used a little timing. Like he actually waited to the water levels to go down a little bit so he can move a little closer, I think. Interesting. He goes there a lot. That's good. You should keep going back. Um, I, I think this scene is just amazing. Why does it look like it's like AI generated? Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. looks too perfect. You have the leading line of the road here. Low light. Um, what about the grasses in the foreground? Is it a distraction? No, I think it's a little bit of depth. I would go back when you have a more interesting sky. Yeah. I think the number one landscape tip is just to revisit the same place over and over and over again. And that is the secret that's going to allow you to get Dang, the best man. pictures of where you live. Bro. Visit hundreds of times. This guy submitted like five photos. Okay, Joshua Davis. Wow, we really had some zooming power there, didn't we? What is going on? So I. Th uh, you know what's tough? This might be a really compelling picture if it was printed the size of the wall, like if it were five feet across. But when you're viewing this online, especially the way most people view pictures is on their phone held like this vertically, which means that it would your image would be like this wide and like this tall. People would not be able to see the fine details. So you do have to kind of think about how you compare, how, how much detail you include in an image based on the aspect ratio and the screen or, or the wall that it's going to be displayed on. No background detected? Are you insane? <laughs> Yeah, maybe selecting the sky no would work. subject detected. Okay, AI is failing us. Okay, today. well, surely I can use a paintbrush here because what I want to show you is that when you have varying exposures, a very bright sky and a dark, dark foreground, you can... I'm using a graduated ND filter. Oh, you know, there's just like so many ways to edit. Yeah, and this is just based on an old landscape photographer's trick that they used to do with... Uh, and, and an actual optical filter, but you can do it in Lightroom pretty well. It works better if you have the raw files, which we don't, but this allowed us to bring up the exposure of the foreground some, and it just better replicates the dynamic range that the human eye can see, because our human eye can, you know, handle 14 stops of dynamic range or 20 stops of dynamic range, whereas JPEGs like this typically show about eight stops. All right. Alexander. Wow. Uh, wow. Where do you think this is? It feels like near Russia or mm, I don't know. Probably westerly, <laughs> Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm okay. just teasing. Um, it's a little underexposed, let me see. Yeah. So your sky was overexposed, I can see why. You can just, you can select them separately. Select your sky, you can bring down the exposure, bring down the highlights, and then, is this working? No, it's not really, is it? This is being a little finicky, but you can bring up your shadows to get your foreground balance. But just, I think going back at a different time so you had better light would actually be right. But you got a good composition and stuff. And Alexander needs to put on his wading boots, and you go out there into those marshes, and you position the camera so that the frame is filled with this reflection more, because we don't need, like, all the grasses in here. That's a distraction. Like, get out there. If you get close, you shoot low with a wide-angle lens. It'll seem safely. like there's more water. Oh, Bruce, safety. I remember you from, uh, I remember this photo from our group, our stunner group. If you buy our photography book, you get access to a group. People submit their pictures there and give critiques. And I saw Bruce's picture there. You're, you're one of the pictures that I saved and, and spent some time editing. Well, it was just. I'm confused by the, 
contrast. Yes. It's just the subject of the boat selected, and then he increased the contrast on that and reduced the contrast on everything else? I asked him to submit a color one in the group because I'm just conf a little bit confused about how hazy it is back here, and I kind of want to see what it looks like. But the co lack of contrast definitely makes the boat stand out. Yeah. And you composed it nicely where you have like the rule of space. The boat is going into this empty space. Mm -hmm. There's definitely depth, but there's the flatness to it. And I'm wondering if that would look better in color because I couldn't really make it pop. Hmm. So I don't know what to tell you, but it's nice. Do you want to level is this? Is this level? I, I really I think don't it's know. level. I don't have that ability. I mean, I think it's shooting through a window, which can throw you off because you just have these diagonal lines. Here, I like this that is you... actually pretty beautiful. And they use a technique I do a lot, which is to use the sun as a focal point and position it just barely peeking out of something. And what that does is it will create a starburst effect without necessarily being at a high f stop. The sun becomes a focal point and supplements the image. And even if you don't have a focal point, that can help you out. I, and I love the silhouette effect, the golden color that you chose for it looks beautiful. They also use natural framing, so if mm -hmm. you're looking to add more depth, you can get behind. It sounds like you ran to the bathroom and forgot to turn your mic off. I know, but it's so, I'm really having a cinematic moment over here. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. But I agree with you that drone shots are powerful because people acclimate to perspectives that they see commonly. Yeah. And it's different enough where it's still novel for a lot of people. So why don't you ever use a drone? I don't know. I've seen you crash them into the ocean and stuff. <laughs> okay, a few have gone into the ocean. Uh, I think this shot is is gorgeous. I love it. I, I don't know what else to say about it. I think I love the processing. I'm gonna give you a pick. You you edited it in a way that's very dreamy. It's beautiful. I like that. I don't know what to say, and I didn't even edit it. That's how nice it was, John. Hmm, you've got the foreground thing going on. You've got your watermark in there, which I like to see. Um, I, I love think the backlighting. That one thing that makes it still visually is that your foreground element is very centered and then your subject is also very centered. So it's not giving me, I'm kind of, my eyes going like foreground, background, foreground, background. And um, maybe if you had staggered the two elements in the photo a bit, then my eye would travel a little more. Do you know what I mean? Are you agreeing with this, Tony? Yeah, I, I think I just... Are you just cropping the I heck want out the, of this? I am cropping the heck out of it, just because I think that's not a good crop. I want this to be more, more prominent, because it feels like that's the focal point, and there was so much in the frame that was not the focal point, and I don't know that I love this. I think it would be much better if it was shot just more telephoto. Oh. Like you had an 18 to 135, which is great for landscapes. A lot of the best landscapes are shot at like telephoto focal lengths. You know what? I think we're really doing something here. Because I like your crop, but I'm also adding some color contrast by making the sky blue. So you have blue and orange, mm -hmm. which are complementary colors. And then in the shadows, I'm adding a little blue just to offset all of the orange. And I, th I don't know, Tony, I think we kind of did a little something here. Good work, John, Tony, and Chelsea. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork. Frank, how are the comments going over there? Did people like my brain special? Yeah, they're going pretty good. We, we did lose the stream for a quick, maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds there, but we're back and it's going just fine. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to go back a little bit because I've been writing a couple things down, but Kathy said that she hates power lines in photos and Pascal said to definitely remove the distractions. And we had some people talking about the Moose episode saying that uh, you would have to get everything in all in the camera yeah. shot. <laughs> yeah, that is legendary. Uh, Trevor McComb asked, how important is the rule of thirds? And one quick last one, Tony Junk Email has said about three times now he wants a coaster under your drink. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's I, a good idea. I usually have a coaster, and hmm. I don't know, we lost a coaster. So, sorry, we're going to have to hear it. I don't know, sorry. We clearly can't afford a coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, how important is the rule of thirds? I think it's extremely important to know the rule of thirds because it's a powerful compositional tool, but that doesn't mean you have to use it. You can break it. You should know the rules and then know when to break them. So It's the most basic thing just because basic. it used to be everybody just put their subject right dead center in the frame and then that composition became very boring. Nowadays, I think, especially with Instagram and the small screens that we all use, most compositions probably should be subject dead center in the middle. 
and people overthink it, but really it just means like think about maybe putting the subject somewhere else. I like. I don't think it's right most of the time though. I, I really like this shot. It feels like a little island to me. Yeah, I like it has a mood. You know, I think you should play with the editing and go a little crazy with it. I think you could get creative, make it really cool and spooky, or you could go into black and white and make it a little creepy. But I think the best thing going here is the mood, and you should play with that and have some fun. I also want to say, I think if you were to walk out, put your wading boots on, get a little closer, move low to the ground, and maybe you can frame out these grasses and just make this appear to float. What are you in the wading boot industry now? <laughs> Well, I yeah, floating one would be cool too. I also like the framing a little bit of yeah. the grasses. I'm skipping forward and looking at thumbnails now because we got a. Does this count as a soon. landscape? I think so. It's mostly landscape with the person as a focal point. I mean, you could call it sports photography too. Yeah. But I think it's beautiful, and the thumbnail caught my eye. I'm going to give it a pick. I think that fact. person's cuckoo, but it's beautiful. Yeah, those people <laughs> out there surfing when it's cold, man, not me. No, you're not surfing when it's warm either. <laughs> You're never surfing. I'm not doing anything when it's cold. Dang, those people that go outside, not me, won't <laughs> catch me. I'm in here. <laughs> so these are God rays, and they're created when there's a bright light source and a lot of humidity in the air, but also a dark background. You need all three things, and they all three came together. But oh, it needs a focal point, right? Like I feel like yes. the God rays are good but like you need something surfing. to go with it and it can be so difficult because it's so fleeting like it might only be there for 20 seconds <laughs> and so you might be scrambling around trying to find a focal point here the focal point is this very tiny boat which leads me to my next question for you kind folks at home when you're doing landscape photography what is your preferred lens and focal length are you a person that wants the ability to zoom in on a subject like that or do you like to go wide and capture everything? So let me know. I'm curious. I guess I could take note of what these pictures have. This one is a 18 to 150. What were they at? Oh, they're at 50. They could have zoomed. With APS-C. So they actually they could have zoomed. zoomed. And I think this is the most interesting focal point there. And I think zooming in on the God rays uh -oh. makes it a more compelling picture. I kept going. That's okay. Um, let's look. That the does thumbnails. not a landscape oh, to me. Oh, man. Okay, that Wait. one's beautiful. This one is. But look at this one. This one's gorgeous. 55 megapixels, what What could this be? I'm just thinking about <laughs> the camera. What could this be? Oh, there's something magical about this. I, j I just right away pick. I the colors are beautiful. Yeah. I'm only putting up the grid so that we can reference the rule of thirds. This is kind of roughly following it a little bit, maybe not. I mean, it's not quite centered, but they have this little element here to add depth. It's You're beautiful. right. I might wish the moon were a little more centered, but <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. And I love using the moon as a focal point. Well, let's look for the thumbnails. Wait, here. wait. I, because, okay, so someone had mentioned that we often are choosing the most beautiful pictures that pop out to us. Yeah. But I do think there's something to just freely letting them come up. Yeah. So okay. we'll just go through a little bit so that we see everything. I like the mood of this picture a lot. And I think it's kind of abstract because you did branches. Um, so I think this is very much about color and mood, but I will say the composition is not hard hitting. It's not grabbing me. And maybe it could be that in the same moody environment you find somewhere for the eye to land. Or maybe this is a part of a series and then I think it works very well. But I like the colors and mood. How about this one, Tony, by Lee Highland? I think this is a really pretty scene. Uh, I think a clear blue sky is a nightmare for landscape photographers because it just doesn't add any interest to it. But this does have a ton of detail in it. You Still, know my eye doesn't rest anywhere. We want some swans. If some swans went through there, it would be five times. Better. I actually always bring one swan with me. Really? Everywhere just I go. One, huh? In my photo Amateur bag. Beginner. Yeah. Um, you know what's a nightmare? When the sky gets blown out and you try to recover it and then it does this. And um, sometimes you can fix that and sometimes you can't. I think this would work well in black and white because the strongest compositional element is this curved line here and it brings your eye to it now. Chris, are you okay? So he's at 450 millimeters. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I, I always is that ISO 10,000 because it seems like that would be extremely bright in one twentieth of a second. I guess Let's lava give it a pick. is kind of dark. I guess lava is... Yeah, you get a pick just for being that close to hot. lava. 
Sonny, you're back. I remember you from before. It looks like this horse is very small and walking on this thing. So I give you a yeah. pick. That's magic. But if you were to get down lower, I think you could position these two horses below this. So oh. think about how those different things interact and know that the horses are the focal point of this. That's true. Um, I do like that you framed it with this silhouetted branch and, and this fence. This photo has a lot of depth and I like that. I like that you chose black and white too. Um, very nice. Hans, Eric, Arp, how have you been? How long have we known each other? Maybe 15 years? Um, I love the leading line of the water here. It brings me all the way back through the landscape. You have some depth with the hills on either side. It's good and classic. Is it, is it level? I have to ask you. I don't think my brain. It doesn't feel level to me. I, I, I think the leading line of the water here is the most important part of the picture. And I would try to get lower and closer to it and more fill the frame with it. So it's just a more prominent visual element. Still, I like this. It's very classic. Yeah, I like it too. The when colors are beautiful and crisp. It feels so clean. Like I just want to take a deep breath. It's very beautiful. Ooh, Thomas Hunter is an example of someone who went somewhere that didn't have a focal point and he, he created one by just finding something. It's not super beautiful, but he made the photo beautiful by adding this interesting element. Yeah, I just like that it's so simple and centered and straightforward. I it, gave it, I gave it a pick. Also, I will say that I think his editing complemented it because you can see the blues here. He made them kind of teal and then he made the yellows orange. And so you're using color contrast to make your composition stronger. That's very smart. So take note. Okay, it's time to do a re-import. So tell me what picture catches your eye. Well, actually, I, I wanted to, whoa. Whoa, these are very good. Yeah, these are really good. I, I love using the roads as a focal point. I think if you look at my portfolio, northupphotography.com, you'll see I have one that looks almost exactly like this with a motorcycle. And you remember what I did. I just stood in the road <laughs> until somebody came through. Oh, yeah. Uh, so an extra little focal point can tell a little bit of additional story if you have like a little red car or one of those cool like van life trucks That would work really well, but I'm gonna give this one a pick. I think it's beautiful um, Let's see Let's can we go to the slides because I like to highlight a stunner who has been helpful and This week it is Lewis oh. Chan and like Lewis has been a stunner for a very long time. He's an excellent photographer. He inspires me. He went on our one and only photo trip. So I feel like I have to honor these people who have been supporting <laughs> us for a very long time. He's also just really inspiring. Look at his work. Um, so thank you, Lewis, for all of your support and for inspiring people in the group. And if you want to nominate someone to be a stunner of the week and just kind of thank them for being a person that's inspiring or uh, generous with their feedback, then you can do that in the group or in the chat. You know. Thanks, Lewis. Any questions, Frank? Uh, yeah. oh, sorry. Yes, we've got some feedback here on the focal links for the landscape shots. Oh, yeah. And we'll back up. We didn't have a whole lot of people chime in on the drone for landscapes, which I am a fan of. It's got to admit, it's kind of easy. You could just yeah. pull over on the side of the road, launch that thing up and just, uh, you know, let it go. Uh, but Kevin Bohr said he lost his drone in the Pacific on Catalina Island and he only had, he only had one more pier to go through. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> so as you as you could imagine, the results are kind of mixed for the focal lengths, 16 to 35. Somebody said they like between 50 and 60 millimeters for landscape shots, 70 to 200. Dave King uses his 24 to 105, 90% of the time. Oh, that's good. Lee Highland says 17 to 55 on APS-C, and then he crops in post, aka the Northrop method. And Robert Eddy said he loves his 24 to 120. I like that you're you're using these zooms because it's so easy to have on you. You don't know what scenario you're going to encounter and it just makes your shots more versatile. That's a good discussion point. Zooms versus primes. I feel like daylight landscapes, zooms. Because I know people say that primes are sharper, but we did the tests and the primes are a little sharper. But if you have to zoom to like 25 millimeters to get the optimal composition, as opposed to 24 millimeters, your zoom is going to produce better images because that, the cropping degrades the quality that much. But nightfall, 
you want to get some stars in the shot. That's when you really need the lens to be fast, gather more light, give you cleaner images before you get star trails kicking in. And for that nighttime, it's primes. This is when I should probably mention that next week's show is going to be astrophotography. You all voted for it. I put it on my Instagram and let you vote. Um, and we, if the weather permits, we will be taking astrophotography and making a video about it. So um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see that and see some tips. Okay, let's go to this last photo. Um, it's Jim, also a longtime stunner. Hello, Jim. Thanks for submitting. Yeah, he's he, got the first name basis. He does a number of things right that I'm talking about in the show. It's perfect. One of them is, first of all, he has an element in the foreground as a compositional element, and he's using it to frame the subject. So he's using framing, he's got depth, he also has color contrast. He definitely accentuated the orange of the rust, which is contrasting with the blue of the sky, and then the red of the lighthouse contrasting with the blue. He's got so many things going on here that are right. And it's an anchor in the foreground, so it ties into the lighthouse. Yeah. Like, there's a story there. Just five stars and a pick. You have... Yeah, Jim, that's fantastic. Multiple elements working together. So if you're wondering how to get a composition in an area, he could have just stood up, and this wouldn't have been impactful, as impactful. He, he found something interesting. Frank, are you, did you have to say something? Yeah, I was going to chime in on that last photo. It's something I really like about it is I can't tell if that anchor is like five or six feet long or if it's 10 or 12 feet long. That's it a huge, it's right? a gorgeous photo. It looks huge. Yeah. And I picture that on uh, the wall of a restaurant somewhere in Maine. Yeah. Well, yeah, wherever this is, like Jim can go to the lo the closest tourist shop and just sell big prints of this photo. Jim is set for life. Jim is retiring. <laughs> yeah, Jim, you are. You did set. it. You took the photo, Jim. Okay, I, oh. I got to import unless you're just Wait, absolutely you're... fighting me. I always am absolutely fighting okay, you. That's pick literally one more, one and then I got to reimport. It's <sighs> it's five thirty seven. Oh my gosh, we need six hours, and yet I don't have that energy. Okay, I'll pick this one because it's simple, but it's a fog plan. Yeah. When you have fog, like we were talking about, it's a great opportunity to isolate a subject. And right here, Lassie, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, use the fog to just frame up this tree, use a dead center composition, and then moodify it with some beautiful colors. I'm going to give you five stars and a pick. If you think there's nothing around you beautiful, you're wrong. You're not going at the right time or you're not seeing it correctly. And that's why I like this one a lot. Okay. We're Remember, going hashtag moodify. Hashtag Moodify. I made it up right here. Remember, you can you can submit your photos um, before the show. Once we change the submit page, sometimes we're a little not so quick about that, or during the show, and we re-import to see more photos. That last photo right there reminded me a lot of a Thomas Heaton photo. Are you guys familiar with him? Yeah, yeah he was on, our, been show. on our show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me a lot. I, I like to watch him every uh, once in a while, and it reminded me a lot. He likes the fog and those just like one trees in the field type photographs. That photo really reminded me of him. I like a simple beauty like that. It's nice. Okay, I don't know if our submit page is broken or something. Oh, this is paused. Shoot. Okay, that's my problem. Okay, I okay. broke something. And we'll have to wait a couple of minutes before we can re-import. That's good news because you hate moving away. So you can look at a couple more pictures. Here's an iconic spot. Oh, yeah. Horseshoe they call bend, that right? horsey shoe. It, it, I find this so hard because it's actually kind of flat because you're looking down on it, right? Yeah, but he went with the wide angle and it looks cool. I think what's difficult is to get an interesting perspective, but you've got some cool clouds in there that makes it interesting. Yeah, it, but it is all about the sky because the sky is going to be a big part of the composition. And to get a good sky, yeah. you just need to be there over Oops. and over and over again. I like your color yeah, contrast like here. Well, it could use a little more contrast, right? Um, Don't you want to raise the white point a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I was just going to raise the white point. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Pop, pop, pop. There you go. That's a nice one. I like the colors that you chose there, and the composition is nice too. Uh, let's go to. Oh, I want to see the boat picture. Do yeah, yeah. Whitaker. So here's some things that I like. You have something in the foreground to give it depth, um, and then you do have a subject, but they're oh, very. I didn't even see that. Yeah, and I think that the photo's a little bit dark. So let's try bringing up the exposure. Oh, see, I was going to say it's overexposed. This is a good time for HDR. It's an old technique, but you bracket your shot, which means like two stops underexposed, properly exposed, two stops overexposed, and then you can blend those together 
and kind of do what Chelsea's doing, but have it actually look better. Yeah. Um, because the dynamic range your camera can capture with a single shot is way less than what your eye can see. So really you're just replicating better what the eye can see. And you also think you're at, you're at you're the reach of your lens, which is 70 millimeters. But that's kind of why you sometimes want a 200 millimeter lens when you're uh, backpacking and doing landscape stuff. It's okay to crop a little bit too. So you have your subject, there's a little more payoff there. But I like it. I like that you had some cool weather there. Now you two were interested in this boat. Yeah, we want to see boat picture. Boat. This is boat. pretty gorgeous, boat. right? Boat. Boat picture. So this is definitely like bracketed and blended just because I can see the brightness of the sky more closely matches the brightness of the foreground, which since it's backlit is kind of impossible. So he's done some post-processing trickery, but it does end up looking pretty natural. Um, and just what a great spot and great sky. You don't get this if you just show up. I, I never find you can get great shots when you're on vacation, right? You're never going to match the postcards of the place when you just show up for a place and you're there for three days. You, you're going to get the best lucky. shots unless you win the lottery. Yeah, you're going to get the best shots of where you live. Ooh, nice, simple, but beautiful. I think we can probably oh. do a reimport. Oh, Ken. Very oh. pretty, Ken. This is gorgeous. It's a little dark, though. I can't even see the foreground. Blue hour blend. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to break. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Look, Look at that at Milky Way. The blending could be more natural. So when you blend, go into, like, this linear gradient, and you don't want it to be perfectly blended on the horizon. The horizon would look a little different. Mm -hmm. So it should. I didn't do this right. But what I'm saying is correct, but what I'm doing is not. So you just want it to be blended a little bit better, but your composition's really nice. Um, the sky is interesting. But What's I think you that? can go back and, and reprocess it and say yeah. it. And yeah, I think linear gradients or at least a smooth feathering over a bigger area is almost always going to look more natural. Yeah. But you, you captured the image. It's the post-processing that needs a little bit of work. And I'll try to do a re-import and see if my photos are actually here now. I go back sometimes and edit my old photos because you're just constantly building on your editing skills. So it's fun to go back and reprocess them. Sometimes I'm horrified by how I used to edit pictures, which makes me realize I'll probably be horrified by how I edit pictures now. <laughs> but it means you're growing, so that's okay. I like the simple picture of a very sad looking tree. Looks yeah. like it should be in a depression medication ad. <laughs> I, I think this is great. Like this has the magic of that classic Windows desktop and that mm -hmm. is such a simple composition, but it's almost like completely flipped the mood. I thought about making the grass green or something, but I kind of no. like the way it is. The mood is sad. Would you go a little more rule of thirds? A I little better, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I, great shot. This is one of my favorite tricks. Using the sun as a focal point, use the highest f-stop you can. So Jesse here is using f-16, which turns the sun into a starburst. Depending on the number of blades in your, your lens's aperture, you'll get two little starburst lines for each blade in the aperture. You get a little flaring there, which I think looks great. And it just means you took what could have been a boring, blown-out scene and you made it interesting. Great yeah, shot. Yeah, it is interesting. Ooh, this is a beautiful place. Oh, I like the composition, and I like these clouds. Um, I would just go in and play with the colors a little bit. I think it needs a little bit of ambiance. Let's go into presets, just because I like to use presets to get an idea. This one's kind of cool. Yeah, I think it could use some work on the color. I mean, I think even. It, the, the water's brown which is the truth. Like that's the way it looked, but it's not what we want to imagine. Landscape photography is kind of often idealized. Like when you think of Ansel Adams, he wasn't going around taking a, an average picture of a location. He was picking the like ideal time, the ideal second of the six months that he spent at a particular location and making the perfect uh, composition. So that is kind of the magic of landscape photography is making something look as beautiful as possible. And here, the brown water, though I'm sure it's natural, is making us feel like it's dirty. I think brown, I think the brown water is fine. I just, uh, because it's cool and has clouds, I'd like to just see um, a little more mood with the editing. But it's, it's good. Your composition's strong and everything. 
Winston Ward. I need a focal point. I need a sailboat going through the foreground or a swan. So if we just use the rule of thirds we were talking about again, yeah. we can fill the frame a little bit. I feel like this is the payoff, this mm -hmm. little guy in the back. Um, and you could do that or you could actually use, let's see. Yeah, I think that's a fine aspect ratio. Um, I yeah. do think a lot of landscape photographers shoot too wide and they make too much of the shot just water and sky. And we need like a good mix. And I think your crop helped re like remix it enough that we got a good mix of land and sky and water. There must be some percentage rule. Maybe that that's what you the end up breaking. Really yeah. about. Anyway, is this a glacier? Maybe. I I'm, think it is. The top is so overexposed that we kind of can't see what's happening up there. Like this is a very contrasty scene between like the very dark earth and the very bright glacier. Yeah, so we'll bring down the highlights and you can still bring up the whites a bit just to add a bit of pop to the whites. Um, I think it's challenging, Diego, because there's so much contrast. Like Tony said, it is a little bit difficult to see what's going on, but you could um, stack photos so you could take one that's underexposed, middle exposed, overexposed, and then blend them so that you're getting more detail in the shadows and the highlights. But you know what else would be interesting for that? I'm sorry. It is ice, so it's okay to tone things a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, we associate blue with ice, so once you're adding colors that we associate with the subject, then you're clarifying the subject a little bit more. Anthony. This is fantastic. It tells a story. This violates the rule of thirds, but it works. So rules aren't set in stone. You can break them. And this one is breaking the rule, but it's showing us the vastness of the people in the frame. Like they're surrounded by vastness, and that's the story. I do, I do want to crop it a of little bit. Of course you bit. do. Because yeah. I, I just felt like the negative space below the subjects was greater than the negative space above the subject. And I just, I'm seeking a little bit of balance there. But I don't mind that they're kind of way off to the side. Um, but that, I'm going to go back and give Anthony a pick. That's fantastic. This one just feels like you fall off the edge of the world here. But I like this line here, the swoop. That's interesting. Yeah, that feels like Ireland maybe because it's so dark. I'm going to do another quick Okay, let's do another re-import. Frank, do you have any more questions or comments for us? Yeah, somebody had asked uh, when cropping, should you use the standard aspect ratios? Kyle Wolf said it took him eight years to go to the same location to finally get the shot that he wanted. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. And several people said that they went back and edited photos that they edited in the past and that they look way different. And I'll chime in real quick on that photo we just had with the mountains on the side and the mountain in the middle. I think that is a location that would benefit from a sunrise or a sunset type shot because yeah. that last photo that we just saw with the pink and the and the uh, purple sky there. So, somebody was out early or late to get that shot. And if that was during the middle of the day, it would still be beautiful, but that sky just adds so much to that shot right there and it just makes it stand out. I agree. Just adding some color and some mood can really change a photo. Um, Speaking of reprocessing your photos, now that Lightroom and Lightroom Classic have the HDR thing built in, which is not bracketing and combining photos, but actually allowing your display to show the brighter parts of the image, Go back and reprocess your raw files by enabling that HDR. I'm going to have a tutorial out soon, but it makes such a dramatic difference. And everybody who views it on like a smartphone will be able to see that extra brightness, but especially for landscape photos. Let's go back to the question about standard aspect ratios. Is there a reason other than printing that you would not break the aspect ratio? Yeah, I have. I, I am not compelled to use the existing aspect ratio. Do you all know what he's talking all. about? So when you hit crop, it gives you your original aspect ratio and then like one to one is square, four by five. These are pretty standard if you're getting your photos printed. Obviously, you want to use those. But if you're posting the social media, I guess you're forced in some kind of forced in the platforms. I guess I guess my answer is you have to consider where you want to put your photo if you're printing it then you have to go by print sizes. If you're putting it on social media, sometimes you're gonna be forced into like a few choices. I think eight, is it eight by 10 on Instagram and one to one or something? Yeah, eight, eight by 10 vertical works best on Instagram. I, it's weird because most people are shooting with an aspect ratio 
that just goes back to 35 millimeter film, which is such an arbitrary way to compose your photos. I prefer a more eight by 10, four by five aspect ratio, which micro four thirds is closer to that, like the modern medium format, like the Hasselblad is, is closer to that aspect ratio. I, I feel like the wide aspect ratio, I don't know, I just don't feel so naturally drawn to it. So I say crop away. I like these leading lines, Ken Davis. You have the line of the fence going right to the door. You have extreme contrast between the white of the snow, the dark of everything else. And then you also have color contrast with this red and the white. You have quite a few things going for you compositionally here, and I think it works. But it needs a focal point in the foreground there. And what I want to see is a kid pulling a little sled behind him, right, right? I mean, generative AI, <laughs> make it happen. I mean, I, you're putting so a lot. It's easier than Ken. having a kid and dressing him up and getting a sled <laughs> and everything. That's putting a lot on Ken. So you don't have to have a child just to fulfill Tony's dreams, Ken. I'm glad to see this because I want to talk about using the height of the camera to control how the, how the foreground subject breaks the line of the horizon. And one of the best things you can do to improve a composition is to bend your knees a little bit, get a little closer to the ground. And Andrew, if you'd done that, then that tree on the left, the branches would be against the sky and we would have better subject separation instead of it kind of disappearing into, whoa, just. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. If you were to bend down, the, the leaves and branches of the tree could be into the sky and it would be so much more prominent and it needs to be prominent because it's the focal point. And other than that, I would just get closer or zoom in a little bit more. Wait, I was trying to do a really bad edit, but it ended up worse than I even thought. Yeah, I was gonna say, you succeeded. <laughs> Wait, could you do what like... What is happening? <laughs> Let's just all forget this. Let's just move on. Okay. Alesh, we're a little off kilter. Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's level you based on the horizon here. The, the colors are a lot. You feel like it's too much? What does it say in I the think corner there? That's his watermark, blue. Oh, oh. okay. I like that um, these lines going to the buildings, like we might even be able to just crop it down to that. Like, Okay. Simplify. It was stressing me out a little bit how much stuff was in the photo. So we want to simplify for our viewers so that they're, they're seeing what we found beautiful. So maybe I didn't capture that for you, but try to simplify a little bit using those compositional rules. But I like the lights that you had and I think you shot at a good time. Barry Miller. Yeah, October sunset. And I think sunsets are so challenging because we see them as so beautiful and it seems like it's so impossible to actually capture that so often so here he is he's like gorgeous upward springing god rays it, but i feel like it needs something else like the hay bales would be a good focal point i would go ahead and trespass you have my permission no if you get me, arrested please. tell them just tell them just drop my name it'll be okay we're friends no one knows his name get closer to the hay bales put them in the foreground that would help also, if you could get a V of geese to fly through the sky at the same moment, that would help. You are putting so much on these people, Tony. <laughs> well, I don't actually expect you to be able to control these things. The way you control it is by going out over and over and over again for decades. And then sometimes you get lucky. But the more times you go out, the better your chances, right? You can't yeah. win if you don't play. I think it's nice. I think, I think it could be spiced up a little bit with some editing perhaps some contrast, some color stuff. Or a llama. And llamas also help. Frank. This is another shot in need of a goose or a swan. We all need a goose. We have a Kickstarter going on for, for swans. That's why we're plugging it so hard. Yes, we're gonna come out with the world's first photo swan, <laughs> inflatable swan for your backpack. What's up over there, Frank? I, I had, in the corner. It, it's pretty good over here. I, I, it, since seeing as how I've been here for a month, I'm going to request uh, a couch or some kind of, you know, soft chair next yeah, time. No, nice. no, I'm just totally kidding. Um, I had a quick question for you guys on that last photo right there uh, with the hay bales on it. He shot that at F2.8. I would shoot a landscape shot like that. Who am I to... I'm not judging here, but I would shoot that at like F8 or F7.1. Is there any benefit other than like low light to sh be shooting at such a lower aperture like that? I think he just did it because, oh, but his shutter speed is 1 25 hundredths. 
Yeah, Good. but he's at the base ISO. I mean, the challenge is he has to properly expose the sunset, which is extremely bright, and everything yeah. in the foreground is is shadow. But we see that his dynamic range got clipped, which is why this is all black. This is a good time to bracket your photos and combine them with old style HDR techniques. Yeah, this was a challenging scene. But I, I am fine with shooting wide open. I mean, he's not that wide angle though. I'm actually surprised he's not suffering from depth of field. But yeah, I pretty much with landscapes, I'll shut down a stop or two by default. Did you guys see this insane picture? Yeah, Aaron, this is fantastic. Car headlights on the lake. I oh, even, that's what that is. Don't even know what to tell you. It's yeah, magical. Yeah, I mean, get a pick. Makes me happy to be on Earth. I'm going to give him five stars. I like the color contrast of like the warm light with the blue sky. Mm -hmm. It's so and pretty. The clouds. Great shot. You did it. What else do you have over there, Frank? Not a whole lot at the moment. People are chiming in on what aspect ratios they like and four by five, one by one, and four by three were some of the most popular choices that we've had okay. so far. Four by five is good. I can get behind that. I started watching my own show. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see who's in the comments. I see Erilyn in there. I see Pascal. He, he asked me if he could submit a specific photo to the show. Yeah, I was wondering where Erlen's picture was. I was looking for it. I'm sure he has amazing landscapes, and I know he's going to be there, so and maybe I missed it. Um, look at the colors in this. This is That's very beautiful. just gorgeous, right? I did crop it down because I wanted those colors to be more prominent, but it seems surreal. Oh, you're right to add a little more contrast That's to it. Pop. Yeah. Ba -da -ba. Great shot. Okay. This would be a good time to use that high f-stop. See, your sun is just a boring circle, but if you're at f22 or something, it would be a cool starburst. Circles. Keep that in your tool belt. Tony hates circles. Oh, this one's interesting. But what about trespassing? What about getting next to those hay bales, making them more prominent? Chelsea, you have seen you trespass to get a focal point. I've seen it. I've seen you push down a barbed wire fence and then hop over it. I, you must have been mm -hmm. somewhere else with a different person. Oh, okay. A different person in Iceland with those fuzzy cows where you felt like you needed to get a little closer to them? I do not recall. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I want to go into the foreground here and just, um, I'm just so obsessed with color contrast lately. What would happen if we just warm things up a little bit and just made the exposure a little brighter it's a little cool over here oh oh yeah that's what it needed oh look Bec at that because the sky is saying cotton candy but the foreground was a little a little dark okay i gave a pick to the combination of hinton actually being there and you spending 12 seconds editing it all right look at oh. us look at us hinton we really did it let's give us a pick these hay bales. Oh, look, Luke, trespass. Good for you, Luke. No, you got it right in Luke there. Luke has a circle hay farm. <laughs> but it's a little he... overexposed. That's you got to watch farm. it. And, and raise that f-stop. Make that sun a cool starburst. No, Crouch down, no. Make it peek behind Nothing, one of those hay bales. Not everything can be a starburst. This could be. <laughs> Great spot. I do feel Keep like, going back there. Get a different sky. Do you feel like the starburst brings a different energy? Like, this is a very peaceful shot, and there's something a little bit more aggressive about a starburst to me. You're right. I like the vibe of this. The toning is good. I don't even mind the blown out sky. Something about it just kind of works. What's up with this photo? It's so pretty. Yeah, it's but crazy. I don't know that I'm believing the moon. Are you believing the moon? I don't believe in the moon. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just man, Chels. Let me say, I just mentioned the moon in our Hasselblad video, and I got a lot of angry people who do not believe Shh. in the moon. Either they believe Please. we didn't go to the moon, or they simply do not believe that the moon is real. Please do not get people started on the moon. I cannot. <laughs> in the comments, do you believe in the moon? Just let me know. <laughs> I can't believe uh, the controversy controversy we've stumbled upon sometimes. Okay, this is so beautiful. I can't even really understand what it is. It's the processing that you did. It's the composition. It's the moodiness. Uh, it's just five stars in a pick. I really love it. it, it just uh, let's just say theoretically, if the moon is comped in, do you still love it? Yep. Doesn't matter to you? Because the moon is comped into our lives. 
<laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. Wait. Okay, finally a drone shot. Kyle Wolf but, said that aggressive starbursts are so high octane, instant Red Bull shot. He loves them, though. I agree. There's something, like, really aggressive about them. Yeah, I guess It's I not always bad. I think it make, makes a good focal point, but there's something very... It's glam. I think a better word is, like, it's glam. Yeah, it's not natural. You don't see that with your eye. I do, because I have astigmatism. <laughs> Maybe that's why I hate it. It reminds me of astigmatism. Why won't you be right? Eyes. What is this? Is either a drone shot or the goose from the photos? <laughs> I am glad that you used a drone. I always like to include. We see the suspect yeah. trespassing. Um. I wish you laid down like a little starfish. Yeah, I guess I just wish I had a more prominent focal point to it. So next time, lay down. But like a good on you for using a drone. <gasps> I think this is um, very interesting. Yeah, but it, it needs a better sky, right? And this is one of those times, like, okay, you found a good spot. Now you get to revisit it until Mother Nature happens to cooperate. Because you're always working in tandem with Mother Nature. Sometimes Mother Nature lets you down, and they didn't, Mother Nature didn't help you out this time. This by is getting this plain blue sky. I'm making the blues a little aqua. I'm giving you a vibe. Let's do a before and after. So before was very like as seen in real life and the after is the mood is that vacation was fun for me in this one. What, how do you feel about my edits? Good? I think they're good. I, I think a drone could have done good here because you could have put the drone out closer to the boat, made the boat a focal point, made a little bit of story out of it. He doesn't want a drone. He could crash it in the Pacific near Catalina Island. It's, it's, you're going you're gonna to wreck some of your camera gear. That's just how it goes. That's why, well, they're not a sponsor anymore, but PPA has insurance, if you're interested. <laughs> All right, let's keep. <gasps> you. This is great. Look at this line bringing this me to great. love. This is great. A little story, right? Oh, is this Again, love or is he a threat? But Come with, what? I don't love those other people. I just saw them. I, those other people, they're ruining the mood. What are you? No, get out of here. You want to edit them out? Yeah, I don't like them. But I like they just don't... that couple. Register for is when you no, zoom you're right. Back, you don't see it here. It's when you zoom down. They could be penguins. Let's give them a pick. I like your processing as well. Wait, would you bring down the highlights a little bit to just add a bit of texture to this guy? Yeah, maybe. Maybe we don't know. Oh, <gasps> Paul, this seems dangerous. Yeah, this is fantastic. I do wish the focal point were a little more compelling. I, I always want to do purple lightning landscapes, Let's but we just don't get many good light, lightning storms here in Connecticut. I have so much fun. I grew up in Pflugerville, Texas. So there was so many crazy lightning storms, but I didn't have a camera, so. <laughs> you just had a mullet and a dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's better, regular or purple? I like purple. It conveys <laughs> the electricity a little bit. Uh, Jesse with his Nikon Z7 Mark II. This is, so you got this hard line of the horizon here, so we got to get that level. If you got the horizon, or you got to go completely crazy and tilt it, but it can't be just a little off. Uh, otherwise, I think this is a beautiful shot. Uh, you went kind of moderate. You got a little bit of Starburst in there, but not too much. Great shot. I don't know how to feel. Fit. I feel like there's vignetting that I want to fight oh yeah because Maybe the it's a little heavy with the, the vignetting. vignetting is it feels interrupting. a little crowded to it which were a little bit wider let's bring up the shadows a little bit if you want to go wider you don't need to get it wide angle lens you just shoot a panorama you just turn a vertical go click 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 and then you stitch them together in lightroom that is a hot tip yeah i, I, like I do that all the time it's still subjects it's you gonna work fine you have to overlap and take your time because i've gotten hasty and then you you stitch it together and it doesn't look good. So you take your time. Don't be like me. An ongoing theme. <gasps> oh, man, we're past 6 o'clock already. But this shot's fantastic. Uh, the focal point, right? Maybe it's even a self-portrait. Uh, but that helps a lot. Moodify it. Oh, oh you've been you moodified. Been Let's do a before and after. You've been moodified, sir. Send okay. me, he could give me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I charge a dollar now. I like these leaning lines. Oh yeah, it's six o'clock. Ah, I mean, you don't I'm not have done. To stop. Moodifying. No, Frank has a life. 
Although I can't blame Frank, it's me. I have a dinner reservation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us. Next week is going to be astrophotography. We will be taking astrophotos this upcoming week and making a tutorial as well. It won't be out in time for the show, but it will be out after. Anyway, send But stunning digital photography has tons of tutorials in astrophotography that's if you true. want to know how to do it. So go out there, get some new photos, and uh, hope for clear skies. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to set a reminder to join us next week at 5. And um, just kind of like bully your friends into doing it too. <laughs> yeah, try to keep the live show alive. Yeah, let's keep it alive because we're doing the, We're four weeks in. We're kind of in an experimental period. I think we're going to give it a couple months to see how it goes. I'm having fun, but is it going to ruin our career? I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. All right, we'll see you all next week. And thanks so much. And thank you, Frank. Bye. That is all. <laughs> I was thinking of Tigar too. We got to get the Tigar clip. Yeah, back we do. In. We have to ask Tigar.